You're watching, yes, the Yankees Entertainment and Sports Network. Well, the new Bay Bridge connects San Francisco to Oakland, and that's where we are in Oakland. And the Yankees are excited because somebody else is in Oakland. That guy, Giancarlo Stanton, off the I.L. and back in the lineup. And it is time for baseball. As the Yes Network presents New York Yankees baseball. It's the New York Yankees against the Oakland Athletics in the first game of a four-game set from the Oakland Coliseum here in Oakland, California. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Yankees Baseball, along with John Flaherty. I'm Michael Kay. Well, the Yankees have won three in a row. A little bad news before the game. Nestor Cortez goes on the I.L. with a groin strain. They, they don't think he's that serious, but he's going to miss a couple of weeks for sure. But they get good news in the form of Giancarlo Stanton is back and in the lineup. It's been 28 days since Giancarlo Stanton is back, and tonight he's going to return as a designated hitter. We know that he can play right field. Aaron Boone is going to get him back in there slowly. We also know the power that Stanton brings to this lineup. 24 home runs, 61 RBIs, and the ability to drive the baseball out to all fields. I think Aaron Judge, probably the happiest hitter in the lineup, because he's going to get Stanton to give him some protection. Hitting behind him tonight, a welcome addition back to the New York Yankee lineup. When you look at the numbers and how they change, you realize how valuable he is. So 3.82 runs per game when he's been out. That's 20th in the big leagues. Cleanup hitters haven't given him much. And Aaron Judge, check this number out, 57.8% of the pitches seen thrown out of the strike zone. That's the third highest in baseball. So behind him tonight is Stanton, and that should change. All right, so let's talk some pitching now. This is an interesting pitching matchup for the Yankees. It's a guy who used to pitch for the Yankees going up against the guy who's pitching right now. Let's look at tonight's Discover matchup. James Caprillion, the former Yankee farmhand, 4.29 ERA, but he's pitched much better of late. Jamison Tyone, the record is good at 11 and 4, John, but the ERA, which used to be in the twos, has risen to four. Yeah, it's risen to four, and you can say his last three outings, he's given up three earned runs in each of those outings. He's throwing his four-seam fastball ball a lot more the second half of the season has had some good results although he has given up some home runs on that pitch the last three outings have been representative he hasn't gotten a whole lot of run support looking for that to change against this Oakland 8 team I take a look at these numbers in the last three starts he's one and two his ERA is 4.26 less than a strikeout per inning only three walks which is important 211 opponents average against and he has allowed four home runs now we told you the Yankees are missing what you could arguably say is their most dependable starter. Nestor Cortez, what does it mean? Who replaces him? Meredith Morakovic has more when we return right here on Yes. On Yes. Hey, everyone. I'm Meredith Morakovic. Nestor Cortez has been one of the Yankees' most consistent starters all season long. But today, in a little bit of a surprise, he landed on the injured list with a groin injury. Here's Aaron Boone with more. We had an MRI, showed the strain, um, so uh, hopefully it's not something that costs him more than a couple starts, um, and and hopefully maybe something that that serves him well and gives his body a little break, and uh, we can get him. He's he's up and moving already. I actually threw with him out here. He was doing agility drills, so you know he's hitting the ground already in, in the rehab process. So hopefully it's not something that that costs him too much time. So with Nestor on the I.L., Clark Schmidt will get the ball on Sunday. Also noteworthy, they called up Greg Weiser. He's an option out of the bullpen tonight. Plenty more to come here on the S Network. When we get back, Michael Kay will be joined by John Flaherty. First pitch coming your way after the break. I want you to part my stop and shot. Feed the moment. My Cadillac, there's no better time to be in a Cadillac than the summer. Visit your Tri-State Cadillac dealer today. And by the New York Lottery. Get out there and play. Some of the players through the years that have modeled both of these uniforms. Great Catfish Hunter. First big free agent signings. Goose Gossett didn't have that much of a run in Oakland, but Hall of Fame credentials in the Bronx for sure. Well, they've, they've won their share of championships here for Philadelphia, Kansas City, and Oakland. A little bit of a uh, 
downtime right now as they're rebuilding this team. A's have taken the field, so we'll take a look now at the Yankees starting lineup brought to you by TikTok. TikTok taught me. Andrew Benintendi in left leads off batting second, the center fielder Aaron Judge. Giancarlo Stanton will DH, he'll hit third. Anthony Rizzo at first base cleans up, batting fifth, second baseman. Clayper Torres, Josh Donaldson at third base will hit sixth. Batting seventh in right field, the rookie Oswaldo Cabrera. Jose Trevino is going to catch about eighth and batting ninth and playing shortstop, Isaiah Kiner Paleta. Well, that lineup with Stanton hitting third and DH and looks a little bit better, and they're going to go to work against James Caprillion in the middle of his warm-up tosses. 21st start, 3-7 and seven record in the ERA at 4.29. Take a look at a pitcher scanner report on Caprillion. Remember me? Yeah, it was a first-round pick in 2015 for the Yankees out of UCLA. He was traded to Oakland in that Sonny Gray deal, and he's been on a run for about two good months now. His last 10 games, 2.83 ERA, keeping the ball in the park a whole lot better, and he's a contact pitcher, so if you're the Oakland A's defensively, you have to catch the ball tonight. Let's take a look at the defense behind him, brought to you by your local Tri-State GMC dealers. Kemp, Bolt, and Brown. That's left to right in the outfield. Infield, it's Machine, Allen, Bride, and Boat. That's third to first. Murphy behind the plate, and Caprillion is on the mound. 28 years old, from Tustin, California, but he did grow up a Yankee fan. Third big league season. He has fought through a lot of injuries to get to this point. He certainly has the stuff. They think he could be a good pitcher, and they're working toward that. Benintendi's ready. Caprillion is ready. And let's do it here in Oakland. First pitch outside, we're underway. Marvin Hudson, home plate umpire. Ryan Blakeney at first, John Tumpain at second, and Adrian Johnson is over third. Sky the other way, and out of play. There's a lot of foul territory here. You know the story. This, this is a multi-purpose stadium. The Raiders used to play here before they moved to Vegas. So that foul territory has taken away a lot of hits from a lot of players. Benintendi, a big part of the Yankees' last three wins. And there's a strike. Well, you look at Caprillion throwing 96, 97 miles an hour here to Benintendi, ahead in the count one and two. He's a fastball slider, curveball, and an occasional changeup pitcher. Fly ball, left side, Kemp on the run in foul territory. And he makes the play in the Oakland bullpen for the first out. All right, John, here's where the pressure comes. You gotta give us the keys to the game, brought to you by your local Kia dealers. Well, Michael, the Yankees have won three games in a row, had an off day yesterday, but now is the time to go. The first seven games on this road trip, two teams in the A's and the Angels who have been struggling. Talked about Stanton's return. Not only does the lineup feel different, the guy at the play right now, Aaron Judge, gets a little more protect protection. And watch out for Murph. Sean Murphy for the Oakland A's, their best all-around player, catcher behind the plate tonight. So Judge takes outside. It's not going to be as easy to pitch around Judge with Stanton behind him. Now, we don't know what Stanton's showing up yet. If he's locked in, he's going to be able to pick up where he left off. But Judge was pitched differently without Stanton. Yeah, I, I can just tell you, Michael, from a catching standpoint, if you're Sean Murphy behind the plate tonight, you're always peeking over that on-deck circle. And when you see number 27 standing there getting ready, it will get your attention. And Aaron Judd's been no secret. It's been pitched differently to the last month or so. We'll see if he gets more pitches to hit tonight and in the future. Fouled away, 2-1. Now, 44.2% of the pitches that he's seen since Stanton's injury have been breaking balls. That's the highest in the big leagues. And you got to give him credit because he has not chased. He has not increased his chase right now. It slowed down the home runs a bit, but he has not chased. Yeah, and I would say maybe there's a game or two where you're like, wow, he went out of the strike zone, but he quickly tightens it up this year. 
swing and a miss. Two and two. Well, Caprillion coming out proud of his fastball tonight. Throws it right down the middle to Aaron Judge. And a 2-1 count. It's a little hop on that fastball early on in this one. Three infielders on the left side. The outfield shifts toward the right side. And the 2-2. Line drive, it's a base hit to center field. Oh, did he hit that hard. A one-out single for Judge. Well, there's an old saying, hitters will let you know how your fastball is playing early in the game. Caprillion tried to back-to-back -back fastballs against Aaron Judge, not able to get it by him. A blistering line drive right back up the middle. So here is Stanton. Yankees 11 and 17 without Stanton. Left Achilles tendonitis. Probably on the shelf a little bit longer than the Yankees expected, but they wanted to make sure they, they got him right. Now, in this road trip, you're probably going to see him as a DH, but they will eventually work him back into the outfield mix. One and one. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to watch these at-bats. We know that Stanton only had a couple of games trying to get at-bats in the minor leagues. Did face Luis Severino and some live BP, but he's always been a super streaky hitter, and we'll just see if he can catch fire earlier rather than later, coming back almost missing a month. One and two on Stanton. So this is uh, Giancarlo's first game since July 23rd. This is the beginning of a 10 game, three city, 11 day road trip for the Yanks. Swing and a miss, Stanton down on strikes, two away. Brilliant has enough on the fastball, 96, 97 early in this one that you have to respect it. it Look like a big curveball, 12 to six, down and away. It's going to take Stan a few at bats to to find his timing. So here's Rizzo. Power numbers are good for Rizzo: 28 home runs, 68 ribbies, hitting 222, seven hits in his last 25 at bats. Four game set here in Oakland between the Yankees and the A's. Yankees swept the A's in a three game set at Yankee Stadium earlier in the year. High fly ball, right center. Bolt is there to put it away. That'll do it in the first. No runs to hit, and one man left. Yankees nothing, A's coming to bat. This Oakland Athletics starting lineup brought to you by TikTok. Tony Kemp in left field will lead off batting second and playing third base is the Mil Machine. Sean Murphy will catch, he'll bat third. Seth Brown in right field will clean up. Shea Langoliers, DH, will bat fifth, one of the best prospects in baseball. Stephen Vogt in first base, Jonah Bryden in second. Sky Bolt, that's his real name. Sky Bolt in center field will bat eighth. And batting ninth and playing shortstop. It is Nick Allen, that brought to you by TikTok. TikTok taught me. Well, that lineup for the Oakland A's going to go to work against Jamison Tyone. His 25th start, 11 and 4 record ERA at an even four. We'll take a look at our pitcher scanner report. Those 11 wins, that's tied for sixth in the American League. And a big reason why he's had a good year return of the four seamers. Last 14 starts, 155 batting average against. And Oakland numbers, not great. 1 and 0 record, but an ERA 6.75 in three starts. So here's Tony Kemp. And Tyone trying to get some reception on Pitchcom. Three infielders on the right side for Kemp. And that's where it's hit. Right to Glaber Torres. One down. Defense. Take a look at the Yankee defense brought to you by your local Tri-State GMC dealers. 
Ben Intendi's in left, Judge in center, and Cabrera is in right. Infield Donaldson, Connor Falefa, Torres, and Rizzo third to first. Trevino behind the plate, Tyone's on the mound. Well, if you're Jamison Tyone against the Oakland A's, you look at some of the numbers offensively, they are an offensively challenged ball club. Not a lot of power. You have Murphy and Brown, 16 and 17 home runs respectively. So if you're Tyone, be aggressive early in some counts and dictate the action here in Oakland. Should be a good matchup. And Machine takes a strike. 28 years old, third big league season. They called him up after the Yankee series at the stadium. He's been the regular third baseman ever since. One and one. You know, you think about this Yankee ball club have won three games in a row, coming off the two wins against the Mets in the Subway Series and a day off yesterday. First seven games of this trip, Oakland and Anaheim, on paper, looks like a good matchup. The Yankees have not played great here in Oakland in recent history. So Aaron Boone's ball club, it looks good on paper. You got to go out there and do it and get back on track to your winning ways. On paper, looks really, really good. The A's are 20 and 41 at home. They've lost 13 of their last 18. They're on pace to lose 102 games. And when we give you the offensive numbers, I mean, they're really, really a struggling offensive team. They just can't do it. They're 29th in runs per game. They're 30th in batting average, 30th in on-base percentage, 29th in slugging, and tied for 25th with 104 home runs. Everywhere you look, even on the pitching side, the numbers are just flat out bad. And uh, the A's have the second worst record in the majors behind the, the Washington Nationals. You know what, Michael, and I appreciate all the numbers, right? But the Yankees realize they get every opposing team's best shot. Grounded to Rizzo. He'll flip to Tyone. Two away. And you think about this Oakland A ball club playing here. They don't get great crowds. A little bit better with the Yankees coming into town. So they'll have some energy. They'll be ready to compete. Mark Kotze's ball club, the manager of the A's, they compete day in and day out. Just not a whole lot of big league experience on this club. Now this is probably their best player, as John said, the catcher Sean Murphy. And it's a little awkward because their best prospect is also a catcher, Shea Longoliers, and they have him as the DH. So something will give at some point. Murphy was discussed during the trade deadline, but he's a really good player. And he's young and also affordable at this point. Yeah, you wonder what the future holds with everything that you just mentioned. But the A's have said Murphy is going to be catching about five or six days a week. He's their guy every day. Mark Kotze trusts him behind the plate, dealing with their pitching staff and one of their most productive offensive players. Now let's check out the Genesis League leaders. So this is for American League catchers. Second in war, third in average, third in home runs, second in ribbies, third in OPS. And uh, he's behind only Kirk and Sal Perez in war as a catcher. And just 27 years old. Yeah, and this is a really easy conversation before the game with Trevino behind the plate, Tyone out on the mound. Sean Murphy cannot beat us tonight in this game. You can pitch around him. You can take your chances with everybody else in the lineup. You don't give in to this guy. Three and one on Murphy. Murphy won a gold glove last year. He's considered one of the best pitch framers in the game. In fact, the two best pitch framers in the American League are in this game. They're right there in that shot, Trevino and Murphy. Three and two. Two outs, bottom of the first inning as the Yankees start a very long road trip. Oakland, Anaheim, and then all the way across the country to St. Pete, where they'll have three against the Rays. Foul the way. You can only imagine how tough it would be for an athletics player to win the batting title. There's so many hits that are going to be taken away that would be in the seats in most ballparks. Pretty much double the foul territory of anywhere else.
3-2. Chopped right side. Torres is there, gets a nice hop. And Tyone works on one, two, three innings. The A's go down in order. We'll go to the second. TV with free baseball all day on August 26. Stream live or on demand on your favorite supported devices. Blackout and other restrictions apply. Visit MLB.TV for details. The fog rolling in from across the bay here in Northern California. Yankees in the A's, nothing, nothing as we start the second inning. It'll be Torres, Donaldson, and Cabrera. And a strike to Torres. They play him to pull. Three infielders on the left side. He waves through that pitch. And the count 0 2. Now, this place goes by a lot of names. So, on the, the ribbon scoreboards around the ballpark, it said, Welcome to the Oakland Coliseum. Then on the field, it's Ring Central Coliseum. Then it's also called Ricky Henderson Field. That's what I'm going to go with. Ricky Henderson Ricky Field. Henderson Field. Oh, Foul back. Still one and two. That was a swing and a miss. Throw got away. And the throw to first, they get labor for the first out. Well, you can talk about all the foul territory here in Oakland, but there's not a whole lot of room behind home plate as Murphy just whips on that. Glaber Torres sees it. And it's going to try to beat him to the line, but with a, not a lot of foul territory behind the plate, bounces off the wall and a pretty easy throw for Murphy. So one down, and that'll bring up Donaldson. Donaldson, familiar with this ballpark, played many years with the Oakland Athletics. Not having the season offensively that the Yankees thought he was going to have, but he's done a great job in the field. Flashing the leather at third base. The combination of Donaldson and LeMahieu rates with the top third baseman in all of baseball in terms of defensive run saved. Now, as for LeMahieu, nothing wrong with him. They're just giving him this day, following an off day, to give him two in a row. He had played every game since he came back from the problematic big toe on the right foot. So we could see him as a pinch hitter. Josh Donaldson trying to get it going offensively. It just hasn't gotten hot this year. And you wonder, coming back to Oakland, a place where he had so much success as a young player, give him a little boost. 3-0 and oh on Donaldson. Four hits in his last 21 at-bats. And the pitch. Strike. Three and one. Also play him to pull with three infielders on the left side. And he works a walk. Second base runner for the Yankees. First walk. And that brings up Oswaldo Cabrera. Cabrera has made his mark defensively. Still hasn't clicked offensively, but made a great throw in the second game of the Subway Series to nab Brett Beatty trying to score from second. Made a play up against the wall in right field. Made a play running into the tarp when he was playing third base. He's really done some job. Yeah, he's definitely brought some energies, brought some confidence to this lineup. You see the defensive run saved in his eighth game. And, you know, you look at the batting average, 160. That doesn't impress you. But the way he goes about his at-bats, he commands the strike zone. 
He doesn't seem to be overwhelmed. You expect that batting average to get better pretty quickly. Yeah, Aaron Boone has said that he likes the approach. He doesn't seem overmatched. He said they've been good at bats, and that's all he cares about. He said, I think the hits will come. One and two. You know, I was watching Cabrera go through his pregame routine here, and it, it's always exciting for a young player when you make your first trip around the major leagues, all the visiting ballparks. Try to get out there a little bit early, take it all in, the, the little nooks and crannies and differences where he's going to be playing right field tonight. And also this first at bat, you know, how do I pick up the baseball with this background? All new for rookies. Served in the left field, that is going to be a base hit in front of Kemp. Donaldson advances to second, Cabrera picks up a single, and the Yankees have runners on first and second with one man out. Again, there's just a calmness about his at-bats. Doesn't seem to be overwhelmed, obviously staying on a breaking ball. Down and away, head down on it, just flip it the other way, take a base hit. Really good command of the strike zone for a young hitter. Well, that's his fifth base hit. And here is Jose Trevino. Been very hot of late, seven hits in his last 20 at-bats. He has runners on first and second with one man out. And the pitch outside, 1 0. Yankees 76 and 48, the Athletics 46 and 79. Yankees have won three straight, all of them by a score of four to two. Two and zero on Trevino. Told you in our pitcher scouting report on Caprillion, he's done a great job over his last 10 games of ERA just at 2.83. But he's a guy that doesn't strike out a lot of opposing hitters, and he walks a lot of hitters. So that is not a good combination. Trevino ahead in the count, 3 0. And here is his arsenal, Statcast 3D by Google Cloud. Is that four seamer he throws over 50% of the time, slider, curveball, changeup, and an occasional sinking fastball. See if they green light Trevino. It takes and takes a strike, three and one. It looked like he was taking all the way, but obviously now in a three one count where he's seen that fastball a few times with Kiner Falefa waiting on deck. Trevino been one of the most productive hitters for the Yankees with runners in scoring position. And that got Murphy. Three and two. Now Trevino selling out for a fastball. He got one and just out ahead a little bit. Catches a pretty good piece of Murphy behind the plate. Marvin Hudson, home plate umpire there to help him out as well. Yeah, they had that little flap that covers the shoulder, but it hit the flap, and obviously the shoulder felt it, and that's why he's still wincing a bit. Donaldson's at second, Cabrera's at first. Still three and two. You can see Murphy labored yeah. a little bit, throwing that back to the pitcher. Yeah, he just winced a little bit on the soft toss back. Might be something to pay attention to the rest of the way with Murphy behind the plate. Marcotze, manager looking on, looks a little concerned. And he walked him to load the bases.
And here comes Scott Emerson, the pitching coach, to talk with Caprillion. Well, this is a rookie-laden team. So there are 13 pitchers on this team. Nine of them are rookies. Out of the 26 players on the roster, 15 of them are rookies. They've used 56 players this year, the A's have. And that ties the 1915 Philadelphia A's for the most players ever used by an A's team in a season. And plenty of season left to go. And they've also used 31 pitchers. Well, obviously the land of opportunity for a young player. But Mark Kotze, the manager of this Oakland club, is paying attention day in and day out to how these kids go about competing and winning a big league game. Pitch to IKF is low, blocked there by, by Murphy, 1-0. Oh. Well, you hear it all the time. When you're a team like the Yankees and you've had the success you've had this year, playing the Oakland A's, the beginning of these games, the first three innings, so important if you can get to an early lead against a club that has been struggling. Big, big opportunity for Kinda Falefa. 1-1. One Donaldson's at third, Cabrera's at second, Trevino's at first. One man out here in the second inning. No score. Connor Faletha is at the plate. Another block by Murphy. Keeps it in front of him as Donaldson stays put. Michael, you talked about the pitch framing for Murphy. How about the blocking? Down on one knee, but able to get around that breaking ball, angle it back towards the playing field. You save a run, you keep the double play in order. And the right-hander deals. Line down the right field line, but slicing foul into the seats. Two and two. The Yankee fan got a souvenir. They're expecting a crowd today here of about 10,000, which is which is large this season for the A's. A couple of games ago, they had 2,000 people here. Two balls, two strikes, one out, bases loaded. Caprillion sets up around the letters and deals. Just missed it, not get the call there. And the count is full. Guy struggling to throw strikes. He doesn't get the call here. He's probably thinking, what do I have to do? Maybe just down a little bit. Murphy brings it up to the strike zone. Marvin Hudson, the home plate umpire. The first questionable call in this game goes the Yankees' way. And the pitch. Up the middle and through for a base hit. Donaldson scores. Here comes Cabrera. He'll score. It's a two-run single for Connor Falefa, and the Yankees lead 2-0. Well, you jump out to an early lead. That'll fire up a dugout. You love the production at the bottom of the Yankee lineup. Cabrera with that base hit. Trevino walked, and then IKF. Another fastball out over the plate. Just drives it right back up the middle. Mentioned that Caprillion is a contact pitcher. Doesn't strike out a whole lot. IKF able to put it in play, a couple RBIs. Now has 38 on the year. Back to the top of the order in Benintendi. When the opponent scores first, the A's are 12 and 61. And that's the worst mark in the majors. 1 0 to Benintendi, who fouled out to Kemp down the left field line. Yeah. 
That one is ripped into right center field. It's a base hit cut off by Bolt. And they are going to hold up Trevino at third. That's quite a play by Bolt to save a run, maybe save two runs. But the bases are loaded for Judge. Well, Ben Intendi just looks like a different hitter over the last week for the Yankees. And a changeup that Caprillion does not throw often. Ben Intendi able to go down, dig it out of the ground. Trevino gets spun around a little bit, trying to freeze on that line drive. The Yankees all set up here, bases loaded for Aaron Judge. All right, so Judge singled to center. That was in the first inning. Bases loaded, one out. Judge had 48 home runs on the year. Trevino at third, IKF at second, Ben Intendi is at first. Two nothing Yankees. Looking for more. Caprillion. One and one. Popped them up. Vote. Infield fly rule, call. Vote makes the play, runners stay put. Aaron Judd's gonna be walking back to that dugout saying, I just got a hanger, how did I miss this? Maybe it just hung a little bit too high up in the zone. That's a pitch all year long. Aaron Judge has been crushing and another look on super shot just underneath it. So here's Stanton, struck out in the first inning. You know, we talk about protection. This is only the third time this year that Judge and Stanton are hitting back-to-back. -back. They did it April 10th and 11th when they were third and fourth in the order. But even if Judge is second and Stanton is fourth, there's still a protection aspect. There's no doubt. It lengthens the lineup. You're, you're thinking about Rizzo and Stanton pot behind Judge. Changes everything. Quickly, 0-2 on Stanton. Well, you hate to say a game could change in the second inning, but when you have Aaron Judge up with the bases loaded and Stanton now with the bases loaded, an opportunity to blow this open. Hit sharply, a base hit to left field. Trevino scores. Here comes IKF, he'll score. The throw comes into second. Benintendi goes to third. It's a two-run single for Stanton, and it's 4 nothing Yanks. Back in the lineup, and immediate results for Stanton in his second at bat. When you're behind in the count, 0-2, you haven't had a whole lot of minor league at bats, you haven't seen a whole lot of big league pitching, you're able to stay on a curveball and just drill it. Between that hole between short and third, a big two-out knock. Couple more RBIs for John Carlos Stanton. Super shot, head down, good extension. Productive at bat. Now 63 ribbies for Stanton, who missed 28 games, so that number's not bad. Here's Anthony Rizzo, ninth batter, to come to the plate. There's some movement in the A's bullpen. And a strike to Rizzo. Rizzo with a fly ball to center. That was in the first. And it's Norhe Ruiz warming up. Foul the way. Quickly 0-2. Benintendi's at third, Stanton's at first. Two men out, four runs in here in the second. Oh. 
And that one is looped to the shortstop, Allen, and that will do it. But the Yankees score four runs on four hits. They leave two. The official hybrid vehicles of the Yankees. Tonight's picture was submitted by the Shields family from Marlboro, New York. Rhiannon and her girls love spending a night at the ballpark together. Everybody looks happy there. The Yankees are probably leading and the popcorn looks great. Use the hashtag Toyota Pinstripe Pride and mention yes in pictures you post to social media to reflect your love for the Bronx Bombers. We might spotlight you in a future game. Well, the Yankees have given Tyone a 4-0 lead. He retired the A's in order in the first inning. Here's Seth Brown. 1-0. Brown won for his last 17. He has not hit a home run in 16 straight games. And he's the A's cleanup hitter. Two and zero. Oh. Well, the start has got to feel familiar for Jamison Tyone. Gets an early lead in this one, four nothing in the second. You think back to last August. The only time that he has pitched in Oakland, the Yankees gave him a 6-0 lead that he was not able to hold on to. So, we'll see if he can make an adjustment in this one against a lineup here in Oakland that has struggled. John, don't lean too close to the desk because there's ants all over it. I saw those before. Yeah, it's great. That's just some of the critters that we've been warned about. Foul back. Well, we got some visitors up here maybe, huh? Yeah, that's what I'm hearing. Possum. They're Pat, actually po there are possum cages behind us so they can catch them. Yep. Right, right in here if you want to look. <laughs> Those are the cages. I don't know if you can see. Not making it up. Lined into right field. It's a base hit. Cut off by Cabrera. Leadoff single for Brown. You know what, Michael? I do want to say it is great to have you in Oakland. I mean, back in the day, this was a Kenny Singleton and John Flaherty special for four days. And I know everybody with yes and in the truck. They're so excited that you made the trip out to the West Coast. Well, when I heard that you had the series, I said, I have to be there with it. I hope you're happy I'm here. I am so excited. Here's Shay Langoliers. And there's a strike. Meredith, watch, wash your hands. <laughs> after you touch that. What are we doing here, by the way? What, what is what is in here? That's dude? probably why there's possums. There's garbage in the cage. Langoliers wraps one to center field. It's a base hit. So first and second, nobody out for the A's. You know what they say, Michael? Failing to prepare is like preparing to fail. So just in case, you know, just in case. Good. I'm glad that we're all set. <laughs> I got you. I'd never let anything bad happen to you. So here's Stephen Vogt. So two quick singles off Tyone. Slowly but surely, John, over the last month, what the A's are doing is they're getting rid of their veterans. They released Jed Lowry, then Stephen Piscotty, and then Elvis Andrus. They just cut him. And Andrus ended up hooking up with the uh, Chicago White Sox. Yeah, Stephen Vogt, a, a veteran catcher playing first base tonight, left-handed hitter. Not having a, a great year as well, so... You know, when you have a young club, you do need to have some veterans on there to lead the way and show some of these kids how to be a big leaguer every day. I'm sure a big reason why Boat 
is still here and in the lineup. Now the reason they got rid of Andrus is that Nick Allen is a superb defender at shortstop, and he's been playing second base. So they said, well, Andrus is not going to be here when we turn it around. Let's just get Nick Allen to play shortstop all the time. Well, I think Andrus also had something in his contract would kick in a guaranteed number for next year that they did not want him to get anywhere near. And they had stopped playing him every single day, and he came out in the press and said, I'm an everyday shortstop. This is ridiculous. So that was going to cause some problems with the young team, and all of those things put together, and they ended up releasing him. Grip foul. Meanwhile, if you get back to this game with Tyone, an early 4 0 lead, a couple of hard hit baseballs here to lead off the second, and Boat just pulled that one foul. And I mentioned that game last year for Tyone. He was given a 6 0 lead early in the game last August and was not able to hold it. So the numbers against Oakland in his career have not been good. Trying to get back on track here in the second. Three and two. I mean, this is an old cliche, John. The last thing you want, your team puts up a cricket number for you to give up runs. You want to go out there and put up a zero right away and establish control for the game. Yeah, you send a little message, shut down innings after you threw a four spot up there, but also pitching a little tentatively, a change up right there to vote. See what he does here, three and two, if he attacks. And he did foul back. He did. Uh, there's some good swings on his fastball, though, here in the second inning. And there's that dilemma for a pitcher. When you get a four-run lead, you know you have to throw strikes. But maybe you change your game plan up a little bit. So important almost to trick yourself into that mindset. It's a one-run game. Let's st stick to the game plan. Foul ball. Still three and two. First and second, nobody out. Yankees lead this one 4 nothing. Another foul ball. It's a steady diet of 3-2 fastballs to Steven Vogt, and he's getting closer with his timing. Talked about in that pitcher scanner report, Tyone throwing his four-seam fastball a whole lot more lately, and it's been a good pitch for him. I wonder if a little two-seamer down and away would get the job done here. Well, he wins the battle as he gets a pop-up, and they call the Infield fly rule. Donaldson made the play. Runner stay put. One down, so big out. And that brings up Jonah Bride. If you're a casual fan of baseball and you know before you watch this game, everybody in this A's lineup, well, you deserve to be in an analytics department <laughs> somewhere. That That's impressive. A bunch of kids that are trying to make their name. First and second, one man out. Fouled off his foot. One and one. Take a look at the uh, Bigelow T weather. The official hot tea of the Yankees, 65 degrees. That's what it feels like. No chance of rain. Humidity, 67%. The wind out of the west southwest at five miles per hour.
Now this place, many, many years ago, used to have a beautiful view. But they built that structure in center field, which is euphemistically called Mount Davis for Al Davis. That's when they got the Raiders back from L.A. The Raiders stayed a while, and now they left again, and that structure remains. Behind it, beautiful hills and incredible vista. Two and two. Oakland is a great city. The people are great. There, there's a there's a, a thriving, you know, foodie capital that's developing here. But they've lost the Warriors that now play in San Francisco. They've lost the Raiders. And if the the A's don't get a new stadium, they they're probably going to lose them too. Well, it's always a conversation when we come back here. Where is that? Where is that at these days? Right. Well, what, what we've been told is that it's closer than it's been in a long time, but it's still a long, long, long way away. They're trying to get it done by Election Day this November. Popped up. Rizzo. Two away. The mayor of Oakland is pretty much behind the new project, but there's a term limit, and there'll be a new mayor after Election Day, so that's why they want to get in the important votes before November. It's, it's going to be tight. And there's a rich baseball history here, the three championships in a row, the teams with Reggie and Joe Rudy and Gene Tennis, and on and on, Catfish Hunter. And then the next uh, team that had three World Series appearances in a row, and they won just one. That was the Tony La Russa A's with Canseco and McGuire and Dave Stewart. There's a strike to Sky Bolt. His dad wanted a name that popped. He got it. He got it. Sky Bolt. All of a sudden, Jameson Tyone has found his curveball here with a couple of runners on in the second, trying to fight his way out of some trouble. Nice block by Trevino. Again, down on the one knee and the breaking ball right in front of him. A pretty easy play. You don't have to move much to your right or to your left. You just drop your glove. The body follows. And the one, two. Did he go? No, he did not. Two and two. So it's been a steady break. Diet of breaking balls. He goes with the slider trying to get the swing and a miss. And the pitch. Up the middle, but Hanafalafa is right there. And he gets Sky Bolt for the final out. Lead off singles are wasted. The A's fan two. We're brought to you by Montefiore Einstein, state-of-the-art healthcare in New York City, Westchester, and the Hudson Valley. As we mentioned earlier, Nestor Cortez was placed on the 15-day IL with a left groin strain. Aaron Boone said he started feeling it in the first couple pitches of his last start. He did stay in that game. Aaron Boone said they do not believe he is going to miss a lot of time. He was actually in the outfield running today and played catch, but they did still feel like the right move was to place him on the IL. And guys, I think it's important to note that he has pitched 131 innings so far this season. They were a little bit concerned about the amount of innings, so shutting him down here certainly takes a little bit of strain off of his arm for a while. That is a positive out of this. You never want to see a guy go on the IL, and they'll likely replace him with Clark Schmidt, but 
the bottom line is it's good to stop his innings at this point so he could pick it up again. And in speaking to Nestor, he said he has felt his arm has felt okay so far this season, so that wasn't an issue, but you wondered how long they would let him go. And Greg Weissert was called up from AAA. Michael, you're not the only Fordham grad in the ballpark right now. That's right. He, he pitched for Fordham for three years before he was drafted by the Yankees, so another Ram makes it to the show. Meredith, they're all around us. We, we can't Everywhere. get away from these guys. The two guys in the studio. Shackle and Curry. Fordham guys. Two guys here out on the West Coast. Ruko watching somewhere. I can get you an honorary degree if I'm you fine. like. I'm fine. I'm fine, Michael. I mean, you went to a great school in George I'm Washington. Proud GW graduate. I think you're in better shape, though, because the president of the Yankees went to GW, too. So you're in good stead. That, that's where you're going with this? Yeah, that's the way to go. <laughs> and Torres works a walk to start off the third. Caprillion threw 37 pitches in that second inning. And again, the walks have been a problem for him. No, he's thrown the ball lately. He's given a lot of free, thrown the ball well lately, a lot of free passes, which obviously make his job that much tougher. So here's Josh Donaldson. He started off that four-run second inning with a walk with one out. Now Torres at first, nobody out. And a strike. Now, Michael, I know you're not a regular usually out in Oakland with us, but it was glaring to me the absence of Ray Fossey when, when yes. you walk into the stadium and this press box and you see there's a patch on the arm of the Oakland Day players. Driven out to left field deep. Kemp on the run. They're going to play it one hop up against the wall. Bolt plays it. Coming home is Torres. Here's the throw. He's in there. It's an RBI double for Donaldson. And it's a 5-0 Yankee lead. Well, Josh Donaldson has done this plenty of times in this ballpark. And he got his big league career going here, and he just stays back on a curveball and drills it. Goes down to his back knee and drives it right almost off the wall. There's a little... Sign on that left field wall for Ray Fossey as well, right when we were talking about him as the Yankees add on as Glaber Torres is going to read this one, takes his turn around second. Then you get to third, you pick up your third base coach, Rojas. He's waving him home and scores easily. Cabrera with a high fly ball, a shallow right. Brown is there and puts it away for the first out. Yeah, Ray lost a, a long battle with cancer. He was a longtime broadcaster here. We all know about his uh, distinguished big league career, the, the crash at home plate in the All-Star game with Pete Rose. But he could play, and he was just a gentleman, and you felt like he was part of what made this place solid. He was just a great guy. Yeah, and just to add on to that, you know, obviously being a catcher in my career and Ray being a, a great all-star catcher in his career, actually get ran over by Johnny, or not Johnny, P. Rose mm -hmm. in that all-star game. And, and, you know, when I made the transition into the booth, he, he could not have been more helpful anytime we were around. So uh, miss him, you know, miss him when I showed up today and he, he wasn't here. So nice job by the A's with the sign on the wall and the patches on the jerseys. Donaldson at second, one man out, 5 nothing Yankees are in the top of the third inning. One and one on Trevino. You know, John, winning those last three games of the homestand, it looms so large because you beat a Blue Jay team on Sunday, Paul O'Neill Day, uh, that had won the first three games of the series and they were inching closer to the top to get you nervous. So that was a big win. Ground ball and a great diving stop by Allen. The throw to first, not in time. 
Just getting that ball was an amazing play. But Trevino beat it out. Well, you thought this was going to be a base hit all the way, and Allen lays out, and obviously coming up throwing to first base, he had a play at second because Josh Donaldson thought that was going to get through, but the instinctive play was to go over to first base, and Trevino will have an infield base hit. The Yankees all set up here in the third inning to add on again. So here's IKF, two-run single in the second. Caprillion continuing to struggle. Anyway, to finish the point, John, that then they, they beat a really good Met team twice. 4-2, 4-2. All three wins have been 4-2. So that takes it out of your mind that, okay, they're not able to beat the good teams the way they're playing right now. And now you go into a stretch where you should win these games. And you could build on the positivity of having won three in a row against two really good teams. And as you said, on paper, these next seven games are doable. Yeah, the momentum of winning three in a row, and then you take your act out on the road, which I always felt for a struggling ball club, it was not the worst thing in the world. You kind of come together a little bit when you go on some road trips and you look at the games against Oakland and Anaheim. Should be a good matchup, but we'll know a lot more about this team by the time they get to Tampa St. Pete. I would say that this time on, out on the road, you probably want to get that bullpen back in order, right? There have been some guys who have shown some positive strides down there. Two and two, another block by Murphy. Three and two with one man out. Murphy is earning his paycheck early in this one, blocking all those breaking balls from Caprillion. And again, they don't show up in the stat sheet the next day, but when you're behind the plate, you know that you're keeping a double play in order. If your pitcher can make a pitch here, one pitch, get a couple outs. And he walks the bases full. And Scott Emerson again coming out. Well, you would have thought that this would have been a conversation to give the bullpen a little time to get going. But it looks like this will be all on Caprillion. You know, it's interesting. It's a little bit of a conundrum for a team like this, John. You want to win games. You don't want the Yankees to blow them out. But you want him to be able to learn how to work out of these situations. And it's all part of a learning experience when you have a team full of kids. Yeah, and the, really the conversation around this team when I was asking people today pregame was about Mark Kotze and said he wants to see his guys compete. He wants to find out. He knows the talent level, but who's going to be the guys that are going to move forward competing and trying to win big league games. Caprillion has been on a good run the last couple of months. See what he does here. And Ben Benintendi takes inside 1-0. The Home Depot getting more done. And boy, Ben Benintendi has certainly been getting more done. First nine games, he had 080 as a Yankee. Last 17, 317. Eight ribbies, nine runs scored. OPS approaching 900. And a strike. Listen, Benintendi's a guy who has turned his Yankee season around, but when you're hitting in front of Aaron Judge, Giancarlo Stanton, and Anthony Rizzo, you should be getting some good pitches to hit, and to his credit, he's been taking advantage of that, hitting the ball hard. Do 
Johnny just doesn't seem like he has any idea where the ball's going. Yeah, and you're noticing the velocity coming down a little bit. He started this one at 97. It's down now to 94 as Aaron Judge and Stanton are lurking. Two one. Fly ball left field. Tagging Donaldson. The throw comes in the third. Donaldson scores easily. Sack fly for Benintendi. And a 6 0 Yankee lead. Well, Benintendi's going to give you a big league at bat when he is right. And the situational hitting there. Making sure you get the ball in the air. You trade the out for the run. You keep adding on if you're the Yankees. There's Aaron Judge. He is one for two. Singled to center in the first. Then popped up a, a hanging breaking ball with the bases loaded in the second. Probably still going over that bat in his head. Foul the way. Kirby Sneed. One and one. Trevino is at second. Connor Falefa is at first. Yankees have a 6 0 lead. We're in the third. Three and one. Stanton on deck. It's been all sliders, curveballs, and change ups to Aaron Judge. And this at bat. Will he get something to hit three and one with Stanton on deck? This is Caprillion's sixth three ball count. There's ball four, and the bases are loaded again. And the crowd getting a little bit restless with Caprillion. So that'll bring up Stan with the bases loaded. And that 3 1 count, I was wondering if he would come get Aaron Judge with Stanton on deck. He didn't. Threw him a change up down and away, and to give Judge credit again. We're not expanding out of the strike zone, so another opportunity for Giancarlo Stanton. Stanton, two runs single in the second. He's one for two as he just came off the IL for this game. Foul back. Swing and a miss, 0 and 2. Inside. Well, this is a little cat and mouse between a pitcher and a hitter. Stanton, the last at bat, got a curveball from Caprillion and drilled it in the left field. Now a steady diet of fastballs here in the third. High fly ball, right side. Long run for Brown, and he can't get there. 81 pitches. Two outs into the third inning for the A starter.
Trevino's at third, IKF at second, Judge at first. Yankees have a 6 0 lead. Just missed. Two and two. Got the fastball up to 97 then. Yeah, he, he's selling out now. He knows this is probably going to be his last hitter. And, you know, when you've walked as many as Caprillion has in this game, you've been all over the place. You're not going to get those close pitches just off the plate. Well, Murphy took a step toward the third base dugout, didn't get the call. So now you can start the merry-go-round 3-2. Two outs, bases loaded. Well, you give Marvin Hudson, the home plate umpire, credit. It was back-to-back -back pitches in the same spot. He did not budge. Runners go. Foul back. They'll do it again. Well, every pitch that Giancarlo Stanton can see in these at-bats, obviously he's going to get closer to getting his timing back. Big league competition. Caprillion coming right at him with fastball after fastball. Behind the plate and make the seats out of play. Runners go again, 3-2. He walked him. That force is in a run. Third ribby for Stanton. Trevino scores. And the Yankees lead 7-0. That's going to do it for Caprillion. Well, Sneed will come in. That was not a great performance by Caprillion. Didn't have much of the strike zone. Leaves the bases loaded, and Yankees leading by seven. Inning with Yes Pick and Play Live. Now on the Yes app. Place actions for free, earn coins, and climb the leaderboard for a chance to win prizes after the third, sixth, and ninth inning. But Yes Pick and Play Live now. Well, the new pitcher is Kirby Sneed, as James Caprillion. Through 86 pitches, two outs into the third inning. He's given up seven runs, and the bases are loaded. Those are all his responsibility. So he threw 14 pitches in the first, 37 in the second, 35 in the third, seven three-ball counts. And for the second straight inning, the Yankees send a ninth batter up to the plate. And Snead deals low to Rizzo. Need one of the players that came over to Oakland in the deal with Toronto that sent Matt Chapman to the Blue Jays. Well, Sneed not exactly a left-handed specialist. Left-handed hitters hitting 280 against him. Couple of home runs. Ground ball, and it's fielded by Bride. Throw to first, not in time. Rizzo beat it out, run scores, and it's 8-0 Yankees. Well, we talked about Mark Kotze, the manager, and the entire coaching staff paying attention day in and day out. I'm not going to be happy with this play right here. That should be a routine ground ball that Sneed needs to get over there and cover first base. He's late. And Rizzo beats it out. He'll take it. Another look on the super shot. Clearly safe. 
Base is still loaded. And here's Glaber Torres, who walked to start this inning. 8 0. Three men on. Sneed deals low. Ground ball. Nick Allen gets the force at second, and that'll do it. Yankees score four. They knock out Caprillion. They leave the bases loaded. Eight nothing bombers. Exclusively on Prime Video. Now you can watch Prime Video on your computer, smartphone, tablet, and through other streaming devices connected to your TV. Just download the Prime Video app and log in or sign up for membership. For more details on how to get the Yankees on Prime Video, scan the QR code on the screen or go to yesnetwork.com. And the next Prime Video game is tomorrow night against the Athletics. Comfortable lead for Tyone as a face 9-1-2 and two in the A's order. Up 8-0, bottom of the third. 1-0. Allen made his major league debut April 19th of this year. And then was called up for good on June 21st. Considered one of the best defenders in the minors. And so far in the majors, he's been amazing. And there's the strike. While Elvis Andrus was here, he was uh, playing second base, played that very well. And chops one to second. Nice hop there for Glaber Torres. One away. And that'll bring up Tony Kemp, who grounded out to second in the first inning. Since the All-Star break, Kemp is hitting about 270. He's at 219 overall. The A's won 86 games last year. And they just decided to break it down because they figured they were in that nebulous state where they weren't good enough to win anything. And they had tradable players that had a lot of value. They pretty much got rid of all of them. And they're starting from scratch. Matt Olson, Matt Chapman, Frankie Montas, Lou Trevino, Chris Bassett. You can go on and on. They traded a really fine number of players. Fly ball center field, drifting back Judge. Two way. Tyone looking for a one, two, three inning here, and you see that pitch count at 50. Already with two outs here in the third with a big eight nothing lead. You're obviously thinking about winning this game, but getting deep into it. To try to save the bullpen at the start of this road trip. Here is Vimael Machine. I, I got to tell you, John, that's a great name. Vimael Machine. Yeah. Line drive. It's a base hit down the right field line. It'll go into the corner. Machine rounds first. It'll go to second with a two out double. Well, we're
we're getting a look at some of these young players, and the machine looks like a pole hitter. First at bat hit all ground ball to Rizzo at first, this time right over his head for a two out double. So here's Sean Murphy, grounded to second. That was in the first. He's 0 for 1. Runner at second base. Now two outs, 8 0 Yankees, bottom of the third. And a strike from Tyone. Doesn't this uh, game, John, have the uh, the feel that we're going to see a position player pitch? Just thinking that the last half inning watching the Yankees hit. Grounded to third off the glove of Donaldson. It'll be a base hit. Moving to third is Machine. So Murphy with an infield single. Well, Donaldson has played it's such a great defensive third base. Just off the end of his glove. Take another look here. Murphy hits this ball pretty hard right down the line. You wonder if he comes up with a clean the throw across the diamond if it would have gotten Murphy anyway. So here is Seth Brown. First and third, two outs. Brown with a single to right field in the second. And a strike. Well, Tampa Bay has already won, beat the Angels at St. Pete. Toronto and Boston 5-5 at Fenway Park in the ninth inning. Oh and two. I give you those scores because those are the Yankees closest pursuers at this point. And the Yankees will face the Rays the final three games of this long road trip. One and two. And what should be you know, a leisurely game for Tyone, it has not been so far. You know, John Detell on our open, you know, he's pitched okay the last three games, but certainly not the way he pitched in the first half of the season. He's trying to find that groove again. And against a team that doesn't have much offensive firepower, this would be the team to do it against. And you have a big lead. Two and two. Watching him with that pitch count now elevated. It's going to be 60 already. We're not through this third inning as Aaron Boone looks on. Tyone just doesn't look comfortable to me. And you got to almost trick yourself into that. You don't have an eight run lead, right? You stick, try to stick to the game plan. Swing and a miss. Got him with the curve. No runs, two hits, and two men left. Three eventful innings in the book. Yankees lead this one 8-0. Well, here are the latest run totals from FanDuel Sportsbook. Right now, new customers get $150 in free bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. Download the FanDuel Sportsbook app now and start making every moment more. The Golden Gate Bridge. Beautiful city across the bay, San Francisco. Audi scoreboard. It's 8 nothing Yankees. As we go to the fourth inning. Kirby Sneed got the final out in the third inning in relief of Caprillion. 
And that'll be Donaldson, Cabrera, and Trevino. Donaldson one for one. A walk, two runs scored, and an RBI. And a strike. Foul back. One and two. I don't know about you, John, and it's going to be controversial. If I was struggling with a high ERA, I don't think I have my hair like that. It's a, it's a beautiful head of hair. It is. It's gorgeous. But, I mean, when you're going to style, you, you got to have the numbers to match the style. Base hit to Donaldson. I mean, gee, you get the ERA under four, you're wearing a crew cut. Just don't call attention to yourself. I appreciate that man's head of hair. As somebody who's thinning out up top, right. I would keep as much of it as I could. Okay. No, you've, you've had that uniform on. I stand corrected. Here's Cabrera. Because when Dennis Eckersley was a struggling, you know, starter, hair was shorter. When he became that swashbuckling closer, Eck. he was Eck. Then it was the flowing hair. The 0-1, 0-2. Looks like he's good conditioner too. The 0 2 inside, 1 and 2. There's Zach, and that, I mean, that's kind of short compared to Mr. Sneed. Meredith, your thoughts? Let the man do whatever he'd like to do. Okay, Gandhi. If that makes him comfortable, <laughs> have at it. Wouldn't be my taste, but. You know. Still 1 and 2. You are so bothered by this. Not at all. Just, it's just a little odd. I think I just, the, the, the greater you are, the more bold and bodacious you can be. No support here on the West Coast. Fly ball. Brown. How was how was Napa yesterday, uh, Meredith? It was fantastic. Lovely time. Did you go to a specific uh, place or just? Went to one of my favorites. Yeah. Yeah. You're not gonna give that up. I should keep it a secret, right? Okay, sure. No, I went to Nickel and Nickel. Have you ever been? I've been to Napa. You've yeah. been to Napa? I'm mm -hmm. surprised at that. Before the Super Bowl. Why are you surprised, John? Well, I, listen, I think of Napa as the wine capital of the world. I don't think of Michael K as a wine connoisseur. Jody took me. There we go. We knew it. <laughs> there we go. You didn't even have to say that out loud. Where did you go, Michael? I don't recall. I think it was a number of different places where we tried different wines. It was a lovely day. One and one. Oh, 
One on one hour in the fourth. It's eight nothing Yanks. That one is slapped into right center field. It is a base hit. It splits the outfielders and it goes to the wall. Donaldson is rounding third. He's coming home. The throw is not in time. It's a double, an RBI for Trevino, and the Yankees lead 9 0. Well, you can see all those smiles in the dugout for the Yankees. They're enjoying this one as Trevino continues his hot hitting, drilling this fastball the other way. The only question would Josh Donaldson be able to score all the way from first? He kind of puts it in cruise mode. Comes around second to third. Luis Rojas going to wave him home. But Donaldson does not miss stride as he scores easily. And the Yankees enjoying themselves in that dugout. Uh, strike to IKF. Pitch outside. Announced attendance of 10,876 here at the Coliseum. Three and one. Two runs single in the second and a walk for IKF and two runs scored. Three and two. Yankees have been looking for Laffer for a while. They've got it. It's nine nothing top of the fourth. Chop grabbed there by Allen. And he holds onto it a base hit for IKF. Well the Yankees have hit the ball hard tonight. They've also had some infield hits that they will take and Allen a great defender at shortstop shows the range just did not have a play after this you see Trevino kind of hanging there at second base he goes back to the bag IKF pick up another base hit. So here is Andrew Benintendi sack fly as last time up he's one for two. It's the fourth inning, and this is the fourth time that the leadoff batter, Ben Intendi, has come to the plate. Sky the other way. Makes the seats. Oh and two. And the pitch inside. Well, this is one of those games if you're a bench player for the New York Yankees, you start thinking about, okay, I better. Start getting my legs loose a little bit here. A nine-nothing game here in the fourth inning. Some of the regulars probably going to get the second half of this game off. So players like Gonzalez, Hicks, Higgy. I think in middle of this game, make sure your legs are ready to go. Also, would be a good game, John, to see Chapman, who they have kept out of the close games they've had recently. But this is a, a game where he could get his confidence back and not worry about giving up a run. Still early, lot to unfold. Just stay with us. You'll find out. 2-2. Two, two.
Now, we told you about the A's and the trades they made and the stores they sent to other teams. Well, the return they got on those deals will tell you how quickly they can rebound. Because you send Matt Chapman away, and one of the main guys you got back was Snead. So he started the season at an 8.74 ERA and then was sent down to the minors in late May. Came up a month later, and he's been better since then with a 4.35 ERA. So they got Snead, Kevin Smith, uh, and minor leaguers Gunnar Hoagland and Zach Lokiu. A base hit to right field off the bat of Benintendi. Trevino will be held up. And I guess for the 18th time tonight, the Yankees have the bases loaded. Again, I mentioned Snead, not exactly a left-handed pitcher who dominates left-handed hitting. He watched all of those swings from Benintendi. Finally, a two-seamer on the inner half, and he takes care of this easily. But Benintendi continuing his hot hitting. Trevino comes around third. He's going to have to hold. There's no state. There you go. Now, Judge was actually drafted by the A's in the 31st round in 2010 out of Linden High School. And he decided to go to college. Then was the first round draft pick of the Yankees. So he made the right decision. Although the A's drafting him, it's close to home. He's from Northern California. Decided, though, let's go to college and uh, get a better draft position. It worked out. No 1-1. 2-1. One, one. Norhe Ruiz is up again in the bullpen. Up the middle, and it hits off of the pitcher Sneed. He gets one out, run scores, Trevino. And now the Yankees are up 10 nothing, and an RBI for Judge. Take a look and see where this gets him. Trevino scores easily. Another RBI for Judge. So IKF moves to third. Benintendi to second. Two men out. And here is Stanton. Already three ribbies in his first game off the I.L. And a strike. And a good at bat for him here facing a left-handed pitcher. We know that he beats up left-handed pitching. So quickly 0-2 on Stanton. Second and third, two men out. Line to left field, Kemp is there, leaps to make the play as the ball didn't sink the way he thought it would. But the Yankees get two more runs. Trevino carrying one of them across the plate. And on Saturday afternoon, September 10th, the Yankees take on the divisional rivals, the Tampa Bay Rays. And the first 18,000 guests in attendance will receive a Yankees Oris Bear mug, courtesy of Oris. Get your tickets today at Yankees.com and be there as the Yankees chase for 28. 1 0 on Langoliers. And there's a strike. Langa Lears was the centerpiece of the deal with the Atlanta Braves that sent Matt Olson 
to Atlanta. They called him up on August 16th. He was Oakland's number one prospect and the number 36th overall prospect in baseball. He's the MVP of the Futures game. Put up big numbers in the minor leagues, 19 home runs, 56 RBIs. He's supposed to be an excellent defensive catcher, and obviously with Murphy here, he's going to be DHing a lot. Trying to get his legs underneath him at the plate offensively. Swing and a miss. Lang and Lear is down on strikes. Ball supposed to be down and away. It ends up up and in, but gets the job done. Here's Stephen Vogt. Vogt, 37 years old, and came back. Return to the A's, one year $850,000 deal. That's not that much higher than the minimum wage. That's the baseball minimum wage, obviously, 720000 I believe, this year. Grounded softly. Tyone does not get him. Much too cavalier, flipped it too softly to Rizzo, and Vote beat it out. Obviously, Vote, an older guy who's a catcher, does not run well, but Tyone just very casually comes over. The flip, not a whole lot on it, but it looked like they got him. Looks like the Yankees will challenge. Yep, they got him. He's out on super shot. So the call from the first base umpire Ryan Blakeney is overturned two away. And here's Jonah Bry. Tyone looking for his first one, two, three inning since the first. In the second and the third, the A's left to combine four runners on. Yankees lead this 10 0. Bottom of the fourth, first game of a four game set. Three and one. And the count is full of three and two. Bright fouled out to Rizzo. That was in the second. Fly ball. Left center, Judge is there. 
And a 1 2 3 for town as the A's go down in order and we go to the fifth. 10 0 Yanks. Well, thank you, Justin. Let's go around the majors. Good news for the Phillies as Bryce Harper is going to return tomorrow. Been out with a left thumb injury since June 26. Alex Bregman having some year for the Astros in Tampa Bay really coming on, putting some pressure on the Yankees. 11 and two in the last 13 games with a 1.65 team ERA. And as we mentioned, they beat the Angels today. Norhe Ruiz will deal to Anthony Rizzo to start the fifth. Rizzo, an RBI infield single in the third. He's one for three. One and one. So Tampa Bay has made up some ground coming into today eight and two in their last ten while the Yankees were four and six so you're picking up some ground when you do that and coming into today's action Tampa Bay seven back in the loss column and it'll remain that way as the Yankees look like they'll win this but still a lot of baseball to play Rizzo chases a pitch way out of the zone one down. Take a look at this fastball from Ruiz up and away. Obviously in a 10 nothing game you don't want to give away at bats if you're the Yankees this one clearly up out of the strike zone and you think about Tampa Bay with all the injuries that they have had especially their pitching staff getting things tightened up at the right time coming down the stretch they're always going to be dangerous. You watch these at bats. You got Ruiz out on the mound who just got called up from the minor leagues. And you have big league hitters who are used to their timing at the plate. There's a lot of the pitcher wants to be ready to throw the ball and the hitter slowing him down. Eventually, you got to believe there'll be a pitch clock at the big league level. There's a base hit for Glaber Torres. So he's one for three. The best deal in mobile. Get unlimited for only $29.99. Visit SpectrumMobile.com. One on, one out. And here's Donaldson. Donaldson, two for two with a walk and three runs scored. Bottom of the order for the Yankees, money. Seven for nine. And they've scored nine of the ten runs. You know, when you think about it, John, what could get Donaldson back to what he was? Facing an A staff that's young and inexperienced and not that effective. And being in a ballpark where he's had a lot of success. Those two things could come together to really have him have a good series. Yeah I think if you're Josh Donaldson and the Yankees you're just looking to get hot at the right time obviously his numbers offensively not going to look like maybe what we thought they would be. If you can come out to the West Coast like you said a place where he's had a lot of success and get hot at the right time. Now, Norhe Ruiz, this is his third big league game. He made his debut on Friday. He's 28 years old. From Cuba. Now, the A's signed him in December of 2016. So he finally got to the big leagues here in August of 2022.
considered a ground ball pitcher. Swing and a miss. Donaldson down on strikes. We'll take a look at the slider that doesn't do a whole lot. Kind of tied up Josh Donaldson on the inner half. You see spin. You expect it to dive away and it just backs up. And a strike. Two and one on Cabrera. Cabrera one for three. Single, run score, two fly balls to right. Served into left field. It's a base hit. Cabrera with his second hit of the night as Torres stops at second. Yankees' 14th hit. Well, the batting average starting to creep up a little bit now for Cabrera, and you love the approach from the left side. Both of his hits have been the other way. Another look on Super Shot. Got to let the ball travel and get deep in the strike zone to be able to drill it the other way. Pitch to Trevino is low. Trevino with two hits and a walk. Well, you give Murphy a lot of credit behind the play. Down 10-0. Trying to work with a young pitching staff, trying to get their legs underneath them at the big league level. He's been blocking everything in front of home plate. You've got to challenge yourself when you're behind this much to stay into it as much as he is. One and two. 10 14 and 0 for the Yanks. 0 4 0 for the A's. Swing and a miss. Trevino down on strike. So Ruiz rings up three strikeouts. We're halfway through. Two of this four game set with Oakland, and the game can be seen exclusively on Prime Video. Coverage starts at 9 with the pregame, and first pitch is scheduled for shortly after 9.30. Don't miss Yankees A's on Prime Video. Tomorrow night, Garrett Cole against J.P. Sears. Sears part of the package. That went to the A's for Montas and... Trevino and he's pitched very very well. Yes, he has made a nice impression out here in Oakland and we'll get another look at him tomorrow night in what you would expect to be a pretty good pitching matchup. Now Merritt did get an opportunity to talk to JP. What do you have to say? 
Well, Michael, he said he knew his name was being mentioned in conversations around the trade deadline and being on the 40-man roster. He knew it was a possibility that he could get dealt, but when he actually heard the news, he certainly was a little bit shocked. But since getting to Oakland, he's been putting his head down and just getting to work. One thing he said he will never forget is his debut in April at Yankee Stadium. He said he just feels so blessed to have worn the pinstripes early in his career, and he certainly thanks the Yankees organization for helping develop him into a, pitch, into a good pitcher. Bolt with a ground ball up the middle, grabbed by IKF, one down. Yeah, and you think of a guy like Sears, obviously coming up in New York and on a really good team, thinking about the playoffs as we look at the probables for tomorrow night. But now when you get traded out to Oakland, he knows he's going to get the ball every fifth day and try to establish himself as a big league starter, which he has already at 1.93 ERA. And he said it's going to be really unique facing a team with so many guys that he knows personally. He was looking forward to it. And Michael, as we know, a lot of these guys, when they leave the Yankees, they go to another team, they grow facial hair. Not J.P. Sears. He said he's not doing it. Interesting. Maybe he should talk to Snead. <laughs> Won't let it go. No, no. I think we're going to hear about this the next three days. Well, we might have three more hours left in this game, so we've got time. You can hear about a lot of things. Did you like playing in this ballpark, John? You know what? Catching in this ballpark for me just felt entirely different because we've talked about all of the dimensions. Nice play by kind of Falefa. So I always felt like it was a, a place that was a little cooler, so a little easier to catch. But when you sit behind that plate, you feel like there's so much room out to your right and your left. It just feels a whole lot different. Background good? Background is great. The dugout situation is different, right? You don't have that front fence in front of the dugout. It's just a, a little bit different place, a different feel. There's Tony Kemp. Tyone needs this one more out to qualify for the win. Glad you bring that up, Michael, because you'd be thinking, okay, well, that's an afterthought. Well, it's not for a starting pitcher. You know, you get through five in a game that's a laugher, and, and you put yourself in position for another win. Kind of get that past you, and then you start thinking about how to get deep into this ball game. Give that bullpen a little bit of a breather as J.P. Sears looking on. You're right, Meredith. Not a hint of facial hair. Now, Jordan Montgomery's gone full beard since being traded to the uh, Cardinals. It's worked out for him. He's pitched great there. And Joey Gallo, when he uh, got traded to the Dodgers, he, he grew his beard back, which he had with uh, Texas as well. And Gallo's played very well for the Dodgers. Eighty three pitches for Tyone. Oh, off of Donaldson and Karam's into center field. That was hit well, but that could be an E5. We'll see how they score. It could be home cooking. Yeah, see if he's OK. I mean, it looks like he's moving that left hand around a little bit. Aaron Boone looks concerned. Take another look. Ball hit hard. And they gave him a hit. Like it got him on the wrist, right, John? Yep. Looks like he's going to be all right, waving Aaron Boone back to the dugout. First thought is that a right-handed hitter, that's your dominant hand, your left hand. Talk about Donaldson swinging the bat better tonight. I'm sure that's not going to make it any easier. So here's Machine. Pitch outside.
One and one, two outs. Now one, two. Third time we've seen Machine tonight, and it looks to me he's a left-handed hitter, likes to pull the baseball. Ground ball to Rizzo, double over Rizzo's head. And a good swing on that fastball in the inner half. So Tyone, see if he goes back away here with two strikes. Tried to come back in there. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. And the pitch. Soft ground ball. IKF. All three assists in the inning, and that'll do it. No runs a hit. One man left. We go to the sixth inning. Ten nothing Yanks. Special John Boy cast of the live Yankees game on the Yes app featuring Jimmy O'Brien and Jake Story Alley. Stream it starting at 4 o'clock and get their unique perspective and live commentary throughout the Yankees A's game exclusively on the Yes app. Jimmy and Jake. They are not one of those cars. Here's IKF. Want to know? And a strike, 1-1. One, one. Two for two with a walk for Kana Falafa, and there's a strike. Doesn't get the call. Let's see if he got in the box. Nope. Good call by Marvin Hudson. There's strike three. Four outs, four strikeouts for Ruiz. He's got an interesting slider and in that it comes out of his hand. You think it's going to break away. It ends up on the inner half and that didn't look like a strike. Ben and Tendi. Right back to Ruiz, knocks it down and gets the out. Wow, a hot shot up the middle and Ruiz, don't know where it got him. He's hunched over just a bit. Got him in his glove hand it looked like. Ben Attendee just hitting rockets every at bat. On the super shot, this will tell us. I think he's just shaking up. It got him on the heel of the glove, John. Yeah, right? got a piece of the glove, but obviously that that's going to leave a mark. Good news, not his throwing hand, but looks like he's going to be all right. But again, Ben Attendi, boy, is he locked in right now? Looks like a totally different hitter. Here's Aaron Judge. One for three, an RBI ground up and a walk. 106 ribbies for Judge, 48 home runs. Line drive caught by Vote. And the Yankees retired in order for the first time tonight. We go to the bottom of the sixth.
your local Tri-State Audi dealer today. Jamison Tyone, five shutout innings. There has been some soft contact against him. There has been a couple of strikeouts in this game. I would say Jamison Tyone not 100% back and locked in, but a couple of strikeouts, some soft contacts, some good play by his infield. Your Audi electric bolt. So he'll face three, four, and five in the A's order, starting with Sean Murphy, who's one for two. Now, I was about to mention in the previous inning before the strike three call to IKF, it tells you something about an umpire in a blowout game if they're going to continue to call strikes and balls, balls. But Marvin Hudson has really expanded his strikes on the last couple of innings. There are a lot of balls that are way out of the zone that he's calling a strike. Yeah, that used to be the the old school way to do it. If these umpires were behind a play, now they're getting graded on every pitch, every game, so you don't see it as much. Back in the day, you got in a game like this, you better be going up there swinging the bat. Check swing. IKF getting a lot of work. Four straight assists for him. Well, Jamison Tyone, the pitch count at 92. As we see some action in the Yankee bullpen, I'm sure Aaron Boone would love to get through six innings, get that pitch count right up around 100, maybe a little bit above, and then turn it over to the bullpen. I think it's a Fordham Ram siding down there, John. Greg Weiser just called up. I think he's feeling his legs right now. Yeah, we got a, the heart rate's elevated a little bit. And, you know, a lot of the bullpens in the minor leagues are out on the field like this. But it, this is a different bullpen in Oakland because that ball gets away from you. Ends up in right field, but looks like he's pretty much under control. Amazing numbers in the minor leagues. A really good slider. And Flash, you mentioned that slider. He said that is his best pitch right now. He also features a four seamer, two seamer, will occasionally throw the changeup. He said when he got the news in front of his team, he was. Goes without saying, extremely excited, but then he made the phone call to his wife, to his parents. They are all in attendance here tonight. So uh, he's definitely looking forward to getting his first opportunity at this level. And I asked him that question about how he thought he would feel when yeah. he's out there on the mound. And it seemed like he's still a little shocked that he was here. But I'll have to wait and see and get back to you on that one. You know what I like? That I, I did see him throw a little bullpen on the side early on, which I thought was a good move for him. Kind of get used to that bullpen mound, and now it looks like he's going to be going in his first big league game for real. And he's good friends with Ron Marinaccio. As we know, Marinaccio has had a lot of success up here at this level this year. He said he was picking his brain a little bit, just trying to see exactly what he needs to do to prepare up here. And they've spoken a lot throughout the course of this year. He said that is helpful to have someone like that you can kind of lean on a little bit. And the head baseball coach at Fordham, Kevin Layton, uh, got on a plane to be here today because he wanted to see one of his guys make the big leagues. I saw that, and I was thinking about the alumni from Fordham, the money they must be paying that baseball coach that he could just jump on a plane. High fly ball down the left field line. God, up against the facing of the second deck. The home run for Langoliers. And the A's are on the board. It's 10-1 Yankees. Well, that's going to be his second home run of the year. And the way the Oakland A's talk about this young prospect, there's going to be plenty more of these home runs. And if you're Jamison Tyone, first run that he's given up in this ball game, obviously you would have loved to have thrown six shutout. That's a little slider that just spins middle of the plate. Not super shot. See the bat head drop. Good launch angle. 
Stephen Boat. 0 and 1. High fly ball right field. Cabrera makes the play and that'll do it. Six innings. One run for Tyone. 10-1 Yankees. Mobile coverage cam. We're following John Carlos Stanton. First day off the IL. First at bat, he strikes out. All right, it's getting ready. And a two-run single. Nice way to come back. Yeah, it was time. And then a base is loaded walk. So after missing 28 games, we go to the seventh inning. He's leading off and he has three runs batted in. Nice way to return. So Stanton is one for three. David McKinnon takes over at first base. Ruiz, his third inning of work. And the pitch outside, 1-0. So Ruiz in two innings, four strikeouts, two hits. One and one. Inside. We talked about Stanton coming back into the lineup, going to give Aaron Judge a little bit of protection. Obviously lengthens the lineup a little bit. But I appreciated when he was asked about coming back and the Yankee struggles, and he's like, you know, we're going to be fine. Everything. There's always just a calmness about Stanton and a confidence that he's going to add to this clubhouse and this team. You know, we've seen a lot of big stars that made their star somewhere else come and go. Some can't handle it. Some can't handle the scrutiny and the pressure. This guy has been so good at handling it. And this was a guy who was booed his first game as a Yankee, Yankee Stadium, if you remember. Never let it affect him, never complained about it. And you take a look at how he's performed in October in the games that the Yankees played in the playoffs. He has really helped carry them to as far as they could go. It hasn't been his fault they haven't won a championship. Hot shot. Oh, what a pick by Allen. You can see why they like him at short one away. All right, it's time for trivia. Five players have hit 50 or more home runs for another team and later played for the Yankees. Who are they? Some hints are right in front of you. That was a National League MVP one year. But in short, I've just been so impressed by the way he handles himself. He just doesn't seem to be bothered by the pressure. That one is laced in the right center field. It's in there for a base hit for Rizzo. Yeah, that, that's why I brought it up, Michael, because just the way he answers questions, you know, we're going to be fine. There's no panic. Is never an excuse from Stanton. We all know that when he gets going in the right direction and gets hot, he can carry a ball club. So, so many benefits, not only out on the field seeing him back in the lineup, but the presence in the clubhouse as well. Meredith, you, you actually speak to the players more than any of us put together. And you have interviewed him after great games and after tough games. That one's popped up. Long run for McKinnon. He can't get there. Give us your take on how he handles himself in that room. 
I think he handles himself in incredibly well. He's always available and willing to talk pregame, postgame. Pregame, he likes to go about his business. He's a guy that is extremely focused, likes to just do his work and maybe not be bothered as much. But postgame, he is always available if you need him. And uh, one thing he did say not that long ago, he had to learn how to play in New York because there were times this first year where he struggled a little bit. And you hear it. You hear it a lot in New York. He said maybe off social media a, a little bit more than he would have been in Miami. But other than that, I mean, he seems steady all the time. The same guy whether they're winning or losing. I remember one tough game he had and they booed him. And I think it was you who asked the question. He said, I boo me too. I mean, he doesn't fight it. He doesn't say people are wrong for booing him. He understands what the rules of engagement are. And you need that sort of player in New York. You just do. One and two on Torres. Yeah, there are a lot of ways to be leaders on certain teams. And I think the way that Giancarlo goes about it, there, there's got to be a leadership quality, not only with the veteran players on the team, but the young guys looking, how does this guy go about his business? How does he handle the media? What does he say? And maybe more importantly, how does he say it? That, that goes a long way. And, John, I think because he's such a big guy, you expect him to be this larger-than-life character. But he really is a quiet guy. He's a guy that just likes to lead by example, go about his business, where there are some other guys that prefer to be more vocal leaders. And what he does behind closed doors when the media is not there, we don't know that. But he seems like a guy that just leads by example. Nice piece of hitting by Torres, taking it the other way. First and second, one man out here in the seventh. Well, the Yankees keep piling up the base hit, 16 of them now. And you're right, Michael, a ball that's away off the plate. Glaber Torres just stays on it, drives it the other way. So now here's a good sign. Donaldson is going to come to the plate after he'd gotten hit on the left wrist trying to feel the hard ground ball. He's two for three with a walk and three run score tonight. Also a ribby. 0 and 1. Ten, 16 and 0. A's one, six and 0. One and one. Tell you what, John Murphy said some night behind the plate. When you're a defensive guy behind the plate, you, you have to take pride in making sure that the score doesn't dictate how you go about your business and working your pitching staff. Fastball down and away, backhands it, but he's been impressive blocking the baseball tonight. Two and two. Grounded to third, foul ball. Rizzo at second, Torres at first. Driven into right center field. That is going to be trouble. It's a base hit. It's going to go to the wall. Rizzo scores. Here comes Torres. He'll score. It's a two-run double for Donaldson. It's a 12-1 Yankee lead. Well, Donaldson 
building on his big night. This is when he is at his best, staying on the breaking ball out over the plate, and drilling it to right center field. And the sound of that ball off the bat. Good carry into the gap in right center field. Rizzo's going to score easily, making sure that it splits the gap. And here comes Glaber. So three ribbies for Donaldson, now 50 on the year. Three hits and a walk. The only time he made out was uh, a strikeout in the fifth. So another trip to the mound by by Emerson. Cabrera fouls it off. He's two for four, a couple of singles tonight. Driven deep to right field. Brown going back and turning. He's going to have to play it off the base of the wall. Coming home is Donaldson. And going into second with an RBI double, it's Cabrera. And it's lucky 13 for the Yankees. They're up 13 to 1. Well, Cabrera having a breakthrough night at the plate. You thought this might have had a chance to be his first big league home run. As he gets that slider middle, he works underneath it. Thought it had a chance. It's just going to be another double and an RBI. Another nice swing on Super Shot. Well, that, that double excited the Yankee bench. And it also knocks Ruiz out of the game. So two scoreless innings, and then this one. Yankees pouring it on here in Oakland, 13 to 1. Yankees in celebrating three of the New York Yankees' most beloved captains, Derek Jeter, Thurman Munson, and Don Mattingly. Run or walk a total of 40 miles this summer in the Virtually United Captains Challenge and receive a captain's kit with the first 1,000 registrants receiving a Thurman Munson bobblehead. Net proceeds will be directed to the Yankee Foundations in support of the communities they serve. Learn more by visiting yankees.com slash run Yankees. Yoel Piams takes over. His number's pretty good. Perhaps too many walks. And he'll face Trevino. That one is chopped to third. The throw to first. And they get Trevino. For the second out. I am just got picked up on waivers from the Royals. Machine makes a nice defensive play at third base. There's Connor Falefa. And a strike. 29 games with the Royals, 3.16. And they waved them. Oakland picked them up Saturday. Soft ground ball, Bride to McKinnon, and that'll do it. Piams gets out of further trouble. 
The Yankees get three runs, four hits. They leave one top for the stretch. Also to Jack. Cadillac game summary, 13, 18, and 0. Leading 1, 6, and 0. Tyone went 6. Caprillion, two outs into the third. Stanton, a big night coming back. Three ribbies. Donaldson, a bigger night. Three for four. Three ribbies, four runs scored. And Greg Weiser will make his major league debut. Three years at Fordham. First year, he was a closer. The last two years, as a sophomore and a junior, they used him as a starter. And he has been pitching very, very well at AAA. 67 strikeouts in 46 innings. And John, I hear he has an unbelievable slider as Aaron Hicks takes over in center. Yeah, and you notice that 144 batting average against in AAA comes his first big league pitch. And he hits Jonah Bride. So he'll always remember that. I don't know if that's how he uh, he envisioned it going. See the fastball with that two seam movement gets away from him a little bit. Listen, every guy that gets to the big leagues for the first time, whether you're hitting, pitching, fielding, there's going to be some nerves. That heart rate is going to be elevated. Let's see if he can settle down. And balk. he just balked. All right, well, we got the bad stuff out of the way. Now we can settle down. Yeah, started, stopped, flinched. And he hits another batter. As Sky Bolt is hit by a pitch. Trevino's going to go out there and have a little talk, try to settle down the young right-hander as Bolt looks like he's feeling it going down the line. Slider right off of that right knee. Now Matt Blake will join the group on the mound. Well, the Yankees drafted Weifer, Weiser uh, in the 18th round in 2016 out of Fordham. He's 27 years old, played at Bayshore High School in Long Island, and will be the first Fordham player to play for the Yankees since Johnny Murphy in 1946. I'm glad he got in today because Jack Curry did speak to the Fordham coach, Kevin Layton, who is here. And he said he can only be here today and tomorrow, so he hoped that he'd get in. He's in. And the Baseball America said he has the best slider in the Yankee system. So he is local in every which way you could think of. There's Nick Allen. Two batters, two hit batters. And there's his first big league strike. Litke gets up in a hurry. Fly ball. Hicks puts it away for Weiser's first big league out. When Weiser comes to the set jump, his front foot is actually pointing towards center field. Certainly keeps him closed that way. Well, he's not overwhelming with velocity, so there has to be some deception, and there's that front foot turning back towards the outfield.
1 0. His Fordham coach says he pitches with an ego. He knows he has very good stuff. Three and zero on Kemp. Works quickly. And he walked him to load the bases. <laughs> so here's Vimael Machine. Now the A's have some room to play with, but they're not looking to hang this kid out there in his first appearance. And a strike. Fastball on the outside corner. Well, you look at that good two-seam movement down and away, and it just screams ground ball double play. You get out of trouble here if you're Weiser and you can execute down and away. Popped up and over the screen and out of play. Quickly 0 2 on machine. One and two. Base is loaded, one out, bottom of the seven, 13, one Yanks. Two and two. Yeah, you can see Trevino behind the plate saying, come through me. Drive the baseball right through me. Working underneath that two-seamer up and away. Slider has been the pitch that we've heard so much about from this season. We'll see if we see it here. Two seamer away. So many people, friends, relatives in Long Island, inching closer to the TV set, watching every move. And the count is full. That was a change. Change up. That one goes all the way to the backstop. It's a walk, a force in a run, and the Yankees lead 13 to two as Machine picks up an RBI, and that is gonna do it as Boone is gonna come take the baseball. Two hit batters and two walks and a balk. So a rough debut for the youngster. Well, you can see everybody on the mound patting him on the back of the, we've all been there. Next time out, you'll be a whole lot more comfortable. Get the first one out of the way. While they're bringing Litke to face Murphy, Weissert has his first one under the belt, but leaves the bases loaded with one man out here in the seventh. This ball on Yes is brought to you in part by your local Honda dealers and by FanDuel Sportsbook. Make every moment more. 
A lot of people don't remember Willie with the A's, and Willie Randolph had a great year with the A's. Swish played for Oakland and the Yanks, and Ruben Sierra. Short Brocious put him in the ninth, have him drive in, what, 98 runs? Help win a World Series MVP? Not too bad. There's Lucas Litke. Bases loaded. Swing and a miss. What do you think happened with Weiser that just got too quick for him? Listen, you're, you're, I'm sure the heart rate, the adrenaline, the nerves, it's all part of it, and you're sitting in that dugout, and you hope he can kind of laugh a little bit, but he'll be looking forward to getting that next opportunity because the numbers in the minor leagues were just too good. Not to get another look at him. He's going to be just fine. You see Aaron Judge taking the rest of the night off. He must be so disappointed. I mean, he's waited his whole life for that opportunity. And, you know, for this one night, it didn't happen. One and two on Murphy. One and two on Murphy. Murphy one for three. Grounded foul. Bolt is at third, Kemp at second, Machine is at first, one run in, one out, 13 2 Yanks, bottom of the seventh. Two and two. Both bullpens quiet. Grounded, foul. Marwin Gonzalez is taken over at first base for Rizzo. Three and two, and there's no place to put Murphy. And the pitch. Popped up. Infield fly rule called as Morwin Gonzalez makes the play. Now when Weiser came out of the game, obviously feels awful, but every one of his teammates made kind of a pilgrimage down to him and they'll start to talk to him. 
And you give him a second to get it out of his system, and then you come over and say, you know what? You'll be fine. You get him the next time. Get it out of your system. Pitch to Seth Brown is a strike. One and one. Foul ball. Bolt is at third, Kemp at second, and Machine is at first. Yankees scored four in the second, four in the third, two in the fourth, and three in the seventh for 13. And the A's with one in the sixth, one in the seventh, still looking for more. And they get it. Third hit batter this inning. And that'll force in another run, and it's 13 to 3. Sky Bolt comes limping home. This looked like a curveball that got away from Lucas Litke. One and one. Langoliers with his second big league home run. That was a solo shot in the six, but he has two hits tonight, two for three. Had 19 home runs, 56 rubies, and 43 walks at AAA this year while hitting 283. And I'm sure as great as he could become, Atlanta makes that trade over and over again because Olsen's having a great year. And they signed him to a long-term deal right away. Litke sets, two balls, two strikes, two outs. Foul back. Gonna check something out here, Joe. Just wanna see if anybody's listening back home. That's where we're at right now. I hope they're with us. 13 to three, don't go to bed, enjoy it. 2-2. Two, two. Slow hopper to the right side and not in time as Langoliers beat it out. Another run scores. It's 13-4. And the rookie has his third hit of the night. Well, the A's trying to get right back in this one. You think about Langoliers and his home run is last at bat. This is going to be an infield single and an RBI.
And here's the ninth batter to come to play. David McKinnon came in for Stephen Vogt last inning. And a strike. So all three runs this inning have been scored to the rookie Weiser and the runner at third is also his responsibility. Remember he got just one out. Two and two. It's sharply and grabbed by IKF. He goes the short way for the force, but the A's get three. They leave the bases loaded. It's 13 to four. Five players have hit 50 or more home runs for another team. Later play for the Yankees. Who are they? So, Stan, Stan. Fielder, A Rod, and Seiko. Do they have about 50? 50. Hmm. Andrew Jones. Oh, wow. And Johnny Mize. Wow, good question. Cal Stevenson takes over in center field. Langoliers takes over behind the plate. So they lose their DH. That means that you have to pencil Piamps into the number three hole. Vacated by Murphy. Benintendi fouls it back. A couple of guys who played for the Royals together this year. Benintendi against Piamps. Langoliers behind the plate. We've seen him offensively tonight, but has a reputation as a very good defensive young catcher behind the plate. He'll finish this one up. One and two on Benintendi. Benintendi with two more hits. Also had a sack fly, so he's two for four. This is the sixth time coming up to the plate. Well, we just had a shot of Benintendi behind. You could see everybody in the dugout. Trevino and Weissert are having some laughs in the dugout, and that's what a good catcher will do. Go talk to that young pitcher, get him to relax a little bit. You got that one out of the way. We'll look forward to working together again. Nice job by Trevino. Two and two. Up the middle and through for base hit. Third hit of the night for Ben Intendi. And the 19th hit for the Yankees. They have not had a game like this in a very, very, very long time. Trevino still talking with Weissert. Yeah, obviously in a game like this, you can relax and have a good time and laugh about it, but. It's a good job by Trevino, knowing how important it is to get a young pitcher to just get rid of it. Look forward to the next time. Like I said, we, we've all been through it. Get the first one out of the way. It's amazing how much more comfortable you are the second time either you're at the plate or out on the mound. Hicks takes upstairs.
came in for Judge last inning. Judge had one hit, one ribby. One for four with a walk. Nagashioka on deck. He'll pinch it for Stanton. Now word from the Home Depot. Avoid extra innings when you buy online and pick up orders at the Home Depot store nearest you. Thousands of products ready in hours. Piamp sets and deals. And Hicks swings and misses. I mean, have the Boos followed him to Oakland? It's unbelievable. Are there that many Yankee fans here? Hicks is really, really struggling. And you think getting away from home, he'd get away from the Boos, but they booed him immediately when he struck out. Yeah, and a good changeup. And you know that every opportunity Aaron Hicks gets, he's trying to get a big swing of the bat, get back in the lineup. Not the easiest role that he is in right now. He's essentially lost even part of the job. They're going to keep running Cabrera out there because Cabrera is producing. So here's Higashioka. Kick save by Piamps. The throw not made. It's a base hit for Higashioka. And let's see if Piamps is okay. 20th hit for the Yanks. Yankees laying some line drives right back up the middle. So these Oakland days pitchers have taken it. Tonight looks like Piamps is in bad shape. Looks like he's having a hard time standing on his own. Look, he's showing that it hit him on the inside of the left knee. He can hardly stand up straight. You got to get him out. There's no way he can continue. Well, we talked about a position player possibly pitching. It could be the time. No one up in the A's bullpen. No one getting up in the A's bullpen. So Piamps knocked out of the game on a comeback off the bat of Higashioka. And it will be Sheldon Noisy who's going to pitch. So this season, the A's have had three position players pitch. Sheldon Noisy, an inning without a run. Chad Pinder, an inning with three earned runs. And Christian Bethencourt, an inning, no earned runs. Another look at the shot by Higashioka. Right on the inside of that knee. It shows you the mind and the reflex of an athlete. So he was hurt. But his first inclination, I got to go get I the ball. I got to go get it. I mean, this is a guy who needed help walking off the field, but he scrambled after that ball. I mean, the courage of an athlete at this level is amazing. Second career pitching appearance for Sheldon Noisy. June 22nd against the Mariners. Scoreless and hitless ball for one inning. Well, Noisy doesn't look like he's going to be one of those position players who's going to try to throw hard. He just kind of went through the motions in his warm-up tosses, so this is just going to be lobbing it over, throwing some strikes. That one is drilled to left field. Kemp makes the play. 
Now Marlon Gonzalez had not had a hit since he got a hit in Pittsburgh against a position player. And he hit the ball very, very hard right there, but right at camp, two away. There's Glaber Torres. A couple of hits and a walk. 43 miles an hour. There's a couple of ways you can do this if you're a position player. You can try to let it fly like Paul O'Neill did, or just lay it in there. You know, when you talk to players, they feel the most effective way is to lay it in there because that's not what they're used to speed wise. Two and one. 47 miles an hour that's registering as a slider, but that's the heater. You know who loved this situation was Wade Boggs and his knuckleball. Grounded to third. Noisy gets the job done. Quickly getting the first two Yankees. Yankee strand two. We go to the bottom of the eighth. Well, those moments took place at the bottom of the seventh inning. Weissert in his first big league pitch. And they hit a batter, then a slider gets a piece of bolt. He gets taken out of the game. Lucas Litke comes in, he gets a piece of brown. He spent a lot of time with Schmidt down at AAA, so they're commiserating. Go to the bottom of the eighth. One and oh. To Jonah Bride. He started that inning by getting hit. The first pitch thrown by Weiser. So the ace sent nine batters to the plate. I guess that first one, John, it can't be easy to wash away. I mean, you could say, you know, you, you're over it, it's over with, but he's going to be thinking about that all night tonight. Oh, there's no doubt. And you mentioned, you know, all the people on Long Island, the Fordham coach that's here. You know, you, you make it to the big leagues, and the last thing you want to do is go have a tough first appearance, and then you got to share it with your family and friends as Luke Licky gets the called strike three to start the eighth inning. But to your point, he'll be looking forward to the next one. Aaron Boone's job is to try to get him back in a game, a situation where he can be successful and get him get his feet set at the big league level. And really, the year that he was having a triple A was just extraordinary. And the Yankees feel that that will translate up here. Most people do. Here's Cal Stevenson. His first at bat. And a strike from Litke. And a strike, 0 oh 2. Along with John Flaherty and Meredith Morakovic, I'm Michael Kay, and we thank you for spending part of your Thursday night, Friday morning with us here on the Yes Network. We appreciate it. It's 13 4 Yankees over the A's. I'm sure it had to bother Aaron Boone to actually have Lou Trevino up in a game that the Yankees were blowing the A's out. But circumstances dictated that, especially when Lipke started to struggle as well, because a lead can get away from you. And he just wanted to have Trevino up just in case. Well, fans, go to at Yes Network on Twitter and vote for the Montefiore Einstein Player of the Week. Is it that guy, Andrew Benintendi? Number two, Aaron Judge. Number three, Oswaldo Cabrera. Here's Nick Allen. 
He has flashed the leather at short, that's for sure. But 0 for 3 at the plate. Last 43 games, he's 23 for 128, so that's under 180. Popped up. Gonzalez. And Litke works a 1 2 3 8. So the A's go down in order, and we go to the top of the ninth. Yankees up by nine. Presented by Spectrum Mobile. Go to SpectrumMobile.com today. How about that single off the bat of Stan? 117.7 miles per hour off the bat. He's back. Hitting him as hard as ever. So Noisy tries to get the final three outs here in the ninth as Donaldson fouls the back. Noisy came on to get the uh, two Yankees he faced to get out of the eighth inning. That one's chopped to first base. Over to Noisy. One away. With Noisy on the mound, it's worth noting that on this date, not on this day, on September 8th of 1965, the A's Burt Campanaris became the first big league player to play in all nine positions. He did everything that game, everything. This copyrighted telecast presented by authority of the New York Yankees may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form, and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the New York Yankees. Hit shortly to short right field. Cabrera was going for hit number four and instead he makes out number three, so quite a night for the rookie. Three for six. Well, big league hitters, especially in today's day and age, they're so used to seeing velocity, and these guys can't just wait for the baseball to get to them. It's noisy, making it look pretty easy. Yankees up there in swing mode. And Trevino takes outside. High fly ball, center field. Stevenson puts it away, and how ironic that a guy named Noisy finally quiets down the Yankee bats. We'll go to the bottom of the ninth. Well, our Cadillac player of the game, Jamison Tyone, he worked six innings tonight, only gave up the one run. His infield defense was right on point all game. So this one holds up. Jamison Tyone will be in line for another win. Your Cadillac player of the game. He will go to 12 and 4. So it'll be the top of the order against Litke, Kemp, Machine, and then Noisy. Fly ball, right field, coming on Cabrera. He's got to play it on a hop. Second hit of the night for Kemp. So here's Machine. Walk with the bases loaded, pick up an RBI. Double, these one for three. Popped up, shallow left coming on. Ben Intendi to make the play. One down. Hey, please, you've stayed up this late, so stay tuned after the final out for the WB Mason Yankees postgame and get highlights, analysis, and complete player reaction from tonight's game with the Athletics, plus Aaron Boone on the manager's report. And here's 
Sheldon Noisy, they lost their D8, so this is where the pitcher was batting, and a position player became a pitcher. And now he's hitting. Pitch outside, 1-0. You know, one thing we didn't know with Noisy on the mound, Marwin Gonzalez came up. And uh, he hit right-handed. A lot of a lot of players do that against knuckleballers. You know, he, he's a switch hitter, and he decided to hit right-handed and hit the ball hard right at the left fielder. But you see that a lot, especially if they're throwing less than hitting speed. One and two. So noisy in two and two-third innings of pitching this year has not allowed a run. Nikes have 20 hits, the A's with eight. And Noisy continuing to battle. The Yankees needed a game like this. We talked about them coming in with a three game winning streak. When you throw 13 runs up on the board, 20 hits, there's going to be a lot of smiles in that dugout. Enjoy a laugh for tonight and good start to this road trip. Four in Oakland, three in Anaheim, and then finally three in Tampa. Strike three. Noisy down looking. A's down to their final out. So here is Seth Brown. Brown got an RBI when he was hit by a pitch with the bases loaded. Swing and a miss. Otherwise, one for three has a single. Yankees 13 20 0. The A's 4 8 0. First game of this four game set. First game of a 10 game road trip for the Yanks. And now the Yankees are a strike away. Swing and a miss, and that'll do it. The Yankees win 13 to four. They win their fourth straight game, and they start off this long road trip in style. Everybody got involved. Not much laughing over the last month for the Yankees. But John, certainly a laugher tonight. Yeah, we talked about it on paper. This should be a good seven game stretch for the Yankees. They get off on the right foot tonight with those 20 hits, the 13 runs. Weissert's gonna look forward to getting back on a big league mound for the second time. Should be a lot more relaxed. But again, Yankees get to enjoy this one, a laugher. And you look forward to tomorrow night, the second game of this series. So the Tampa Bay Rays and the Toronto Blue Jays both won, and now they know that the Yankees won as well. So one more game off the calendar. A lot more to do, wrap things up, than the post game after that.